think we were about to begin talking about some of the works that are in the, um, the MFA uh, exhibition. So I'm going to share my screen again and hopefully, uh, and have a backup here. I'm actually now, instead of just using Wi-Fi, I'm also using my, my phone as a hotspot. So I'm not sure if it was me, you, or somebody else, but I think we should be okay uh, from this point. Let's see. We were talking about Maud Madsen and next. Let me know if you're still able to see my screen. Um, I see everything. A... Awesome, awesome. So uh, we were we were about to begin talking about uh, the the 46 artists that are in the uh, the MFA exhibition. And so what I've done um, because I know that um, we only have about another 20 minutes or so, or 30 minutes or so, um, is I've selected eight works from uh from the exhibition that i'd like to talk about uh it in no way um indicates that the other works aren't equally as important um so let's let's start here um view from the 21st um by julie uh, barbo uh, one of the things you said in your essay about this work was that um you know it's unclear if this is a view from the 21st floor or a view from the 21st century and i thought that was uh I thought that was really, really uh, well said. And um, if you recall this work, uh, maybe you can um, share some of your thoughts about it. Well, it was kind of, it was one of my favorites. And I'm, I'm not really sure why, you know how it is uh, with, with stuff like with aesthetic response. Uh, I like the way it, it operates on two levels, a, a sort of pretend level on the windowsill and then a view to the city outside. And it seems like, is that the Chrysler building? is tipping a little bit. So we're, we're seeing a, maybe a, something that's slightly apocalyptic. And I also tag that couple as, as departing, maybe Adam and Eve departing the Garden of Eden. So as a kind of sign, a metaphor, uh, uh, something that has various layers of meaning that it just a, appealed to me as a kind of uh, really nice interweaving of, uh, of different things that's basically my response yeah i think that the i think that julie made some interesting decisions here about how to engage the figure and also how to engage um the landscape and in many ways this feels like a landscape painting to me um uh, as much as anything else uh, being a being a, a new yorker uh, one of the things I pride myself on is anytime I'm watching a film that's shot in New York, if I get the slightest glimpse of a street or, or some aspect of the city to try to figure out exactly where they are. Um, and um, although I have no idea where this, this, this image is from, uh, there are certain aspects of buildings and th that do in fact seem very familiar to me. Knowing where New York Academy of Art is located, this feels a little bit uh, like a building that's down on Church Street. I'm, I'm getting that's into the, the weeds AT, here. The AT&T building, yeah. Ex or exactly used to be right. the AT&T building. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> Spoken like a true New Yorker. Oh, yeah. uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's go to the next work um, on my list, uh, page 28 here. And sorry if I'm moving past any anyone who's joined us today, if I'm moving quickly past your work, please do not uh, feel bad. Um, <laughs> this is all in the interest of time. So I want to get to page 28. Um, something you said about this work in your essay was, um, and I'm paraphrasing here, um, that they're lounging on the beach in the only way that contemporary people know how to, <laughs> with sunglasses, um, bathing suits, and a beach towel. That's right, because it is kind of a classical uh, uh, motif, the like three graces or Three Furies, or uh, I don't know what, uh, and uh, it's just uh, a little bit of Arcadian timelessness with a very contemporary note. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I think that that that's that's all very true. Um, you know, we've all it's it's how can I put this? Um, and this is actually a compliment. We've all seen this painting before, right? Um, however any artist's attempt to make this painting again and to do it in a way that is compelling is actually a triumph to be able to do that, right? Because this scene has been set for perhaps millions of times. Um, and and I, I think that she actually accomplished something um, really fantastic with this painting. 
uh, I put this painting in my house. Highest compliment I can give to a painting. <laughs> I'd live with this painting. Um, let's let's go to the next one that I've highlighted here. I wish I could talk about all of these. So this isn't a painting at all, um, but it was a very, very interesting work, profit maker. Um, you know, talk about being of the moment, right? Of the moment in so many ways. It's so layered, this sculpture is so layered. I mean, I read, I read it, you know, in my in my own, you know, I, I try not to be too cynical, but I but I read it in my own cynical way. Um, because so I see, I see, I see three or four things happening here at once. Um, you know, obviously there's a there's a reference to the pandemic that's quite obvious with the mask, and certainly the bear wearing the tie with the calculator is an is a reference to finance. Uh, the band-aid on the lower bear, let's call them lower and upper bear. <laughs> the band-aid on the lower bear, perhaps that references a recent vaccination. Um, but I think that the other thing that's quite interesting to me. Is that these are both these are both bears, right? And thinking about the stock market and the bear market and the and the and what everyone has been not everyone but so many people have been talking about this coming bear market. Um, so that, that's how I read this. I think uh, I I really like this sculpture. I think um, it's nice to see you scroll through all these different artworks and remind me of uh, when I was studying them closely a couple of weeks ago, a month ago. To see them all again, they, they really look fresh and strong. And this one, uh, uh, to my mind, it stands out as probably the only pop art work in the in the class. And it's it's uh, one of the handful of sculptures. And I think what I I just realized the other day is that uh, Irina, uh, I think, is from Russia. She's Russian, and and the bear, of course, is a Russian symbol uh, and um, I didn't even think about that <laughs> and, and you know I uh, the bear market also is really good reading although I think uh, we're we need we need to look for a bull maybe she'll turn to bulls next but I like the somehow I like the idea of an American art student making teddy bears and, and to perhaps re represent Russia or Russian in New York, and uh, it just seemed uh, very, very interesting. The, the this is very cute, you know, despite the complexity of the sign, as you pointed out, that teddy bear is really cute and almost infantile. But here, it's a the teddy bear is facing the real world, so there's that kind of innocence, uh, innocence with the sh uh, the shades pulled from their eyes. I don't know. There's a lot of a lot of possible readings with a work like that. It's also feel, as I said, very corporate. It feels very Toys R Us. It feels very you know modern manufacture, even though these are handmade. Her works are handmade glazed clay sculptures. It also feels like it reminded me a little bit of the artist Chaim Steinbeck, who uh, to me his sculpture often seems to be a celebration of modern plastic manufacturing. Mm. So it, it made me think of that a little bit too, like the way our, uh, the way we manufacture all these goods, you know, it's like, what, what would you call it? I don't know, some kind of mold, plastic mold process. So, uh, yeah, yeah I, you know, this, it's a very compact work as well. It's only 24 inches tall, um, which I also think, um, will have a very sort of like viscerally different um, response in person versus seeing it here flat on the page or on the page and then my screen um, as it were. So I'm gonna move to the next work, which happens to also be on the next page. Um, this is Contrition by Alicia uh, Li Lang. Um, I think very different from the other works that I, we previously talked about. Um, but I was just really struck by this and wanted to spend a moment with you getting your read on this particular uh, oil painting on canvas. Well, you know, one of the things that artists try to do with their art and that people look for when they're reading it and it interests me very much is this idea of feeling and uh, 
communicating feeling and feeling as something that is deep and spiritual and, and hard to define in words. And, you know, this kind of issue or this kind of reading comes up in abstract art. If you think of uh, Mark Rothko uh, and a lot of abstract painters, and it also comes up in, in, in figurative art in terms of the way we communicate socially. And I guess that's my reading here. Contrition means uh, the idea is you are uh, feeling remorse for uh, some wrong that you've done that you want to make amends and you have three figures who aren't actually confronting each other, although they're very aware of each other's presence. And, and that's, that's carefully and artfully done that, yeah, mm -hmm. that this pose, you know? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't say it better. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm, I'm just being mindful of time. I'd like to move on to the next work. Let's see. Oh, there's so much good good work here. I wish I wish I could stop. Here we are. This is the next one that I I wanted to uh, talk about. So I hope I'm pronouncing Erin's last name correctly. It's either uh, Miles or Miles, but uh, this work, Tripwire 2021, uh, oil on oil and acrylic on canvas. Um, do you recall um, your initial reaction to this work? Uh, well, you know, it. I paired it, I think, with with um, with was it Maud with its Maud, with Maud's work, the the other mm -hmm. blue work with two figures engaged, and um, this one I think is also really inventive and wry and uh, and interesting. You know, the two of them should uh, get together, form a school. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 you know, I think that the thing about those two works that also, I, I perhaps that's why it struck me. It, there, it's the figure, but there's no face, right? And, and I'm finding, uh, at least, and this is obviously just like a personal um, taste of mine. And I'm finding myself to be attracted more and more to figurative paintings that don't engage with the actual face of the figure. Um, it gives me more time to think about other things other than say, you know, identity or thinking about um, expression, like facial expression, but more about how an artist can deal with spatial challenges and, uh, and deal with color. And, uh, and I just have, a, I, I'm finding myself having uh, more of a, like a, a reaction to uh, figurative works that don't um, have the, uh, the figure's uh, face in the painting, uh, but that's just me. <laughs> well, it, it certainly is cropped in, you're right. And, and you can see it's like a couple that's all tangled up in housework. Yeah, and I can relate. And <laughs> she has, she, it looks like she has a, a hand, armful of laundry. Is that what you think? Is I think that what so. that looks like to you? Yes. So we can, we can all, we, all us old married folks can definitely relate. And, um, you know, that's comic. I think the, the toe is arguably a phallic symbol, but maybe I'm getting too Freudian. I don't know. You could decide. Well, maybe even the vacuum cleaner is a bit of a phallic symbol. We just bought a Dyson mm -hmm. and I can tell you that is definitely a phallic symbol. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, let's move on to the next work um, that I wanted to talk about. Um, I think it's page 49. Um, here, here we go. This is a uh, Siri maternity, uh, Leonardo Rodriguez. So this, this work, again, I think you, you mentioned this about a prior work, so many different materials gone into this work. This is wood, paper, fabric, wood filling, sandpaper, acrylic, and oil on cardboard. So a lot of complexity of materials to arrive at this work, uh, but it's so it's interesting to arrive at what could be con considered an extremely classic, um, you know, uh, image of a mother and child. Yes, you or know, one the, of the. Yeah, go ahead. Now, or in this, or in this case, some, you know, or I could read it differently because I, you know, it could be, it could be a nanny and child. I don't know. I, I'm just saying it's. Oh, actually, that now now that you mention it, the baby is pink and the the mother is brown, although her hand right. is pink. So right, right, pink, it's hard so to it's read. Confusing. Right, right. Uh, I was just going to I was just going to say the issue when you make paintings is 
is the surface. What are you going to do with the surface? Of course, you know, we, the surface can be flat and plain and straightforwardly colored, or it can have a, a qualities, you know, it's important to be able to step up to a painting and see the texture and be, be viscerally involved with the, the material of, of the artwork. That's one of the things that is often overlooked in, in um, these kind of digital media. You know, I, I always regret we don't have enough close-ups of the surface. I always try to throw in a close-up when I do my Instagram to let people see a little bit in more detail the actual hand of the artist. And, uh, you know, that is, that is one of the, the, like the striking material presence of the work is, is I think what, what drew me to it first. Although now I like the, uh, the idea of a nanny with a, with a child, which here on the Upper East Side, I see this quite frequently. It's a, it's fascinating subject. It's a special subject. Yeah. Very modern. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I, I I think that the choice of materials in this work were were great um, as well because it it, it elevates it um, to being something um, to being something more than and I won't say just a painting because a painting can be everything, but it elevates it and I really uh, I really admire this work. The next work we have two more to go through. Uh, this is uh, somewhere on Glenus Road, uh, very different from everything else that we've talked about. Um, uh, you know, veers veers into abstraction. However, um, clearly, um, based upon the title and color choices, it feels like a location, uh, a very defined location. Right. I think my my reaction was it it felt like the artist was invoking maybe even sci-fi or mystical spirits uh, in a field on the land. That was sort of my literal reading it's a it's the painting is as you say it's and it's abstract but it refers to landscape i think um it's quite it's quite large uh, this work is of almost five by eight feet um so again i think the physical presence of this work uh in person would be you know the gravity of it would be felt entirely differently than than it is here. But even in this, even in this flattened uh, digital format, I think it's remarkable. I suspect I suspect that there there are figures in the in the picture that we can barely make out, and that it's it's uh, invention. The invention of the image was very much part of the action painting kind of process where the, the artist was, you know, dancing across the surface of the canvas with his gestures and brush strokes. You know, I cheated a little bit because I, I talked to, I heard Wilma talk uh, the other day. And, uh, and so I got th this impression. I know this is an earlier work by his and more, more, a more recent series. You get a much stronger effect of, of the action painting effect. You can see traces of the artist's, you know, big motions in the picture. So I cheated. <laughs> That's okay. Actually the, talk to the artist. <laughs> and the and and the final work um here that and, and again I I love what you had to say about gunslingers in your in your essay, I, if I recall correctly, you said something uh, along the lines of, you know, it's sort of reminiscent of the the classic uh, buddy film where, you know, the, 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 the two guys are sort of outnumbered and outgunned back to back, uh, defending one another, um, that final scene. Uh, yes. And uh, yeah, and I, I think that that was a really uh, apt read of this work. Well, they, they, there is actually, there is a movie it's called Two Guns, and it stars Mark Wahlberg and Denzel Washington. <laughs> and um, it's it's sort of a comedy. It's not really a western, like like I know uh, uh, Jed is into into the West and the myth of the West. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, shooting yeah, it's, it's guns. Very Hollywood. Very Hollywood. I mean, this work feels it feels like it could be a movie poster in that regard. It has that sort of uh, that that feeling to it. And also, you know, it it's it speaks to um, it's very American. 
you know, like there's something, you know, this this is a extremely American painting for a number of reasons. But it's like if you saw this work and knew nothing from anything, um, you would read. I, I think you would read this as a very American painting. That's certainly true, and and it also has the cropped figures that you like. And we should probably say it's a watercolor, and he's a really competent watercolorist. Yeah, very very well well executed work. So, um, so those those are the eight works um, that I wanted to highlight, Walter. We're 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 doing we're doing well on time here. I'm going to stop my screen share for a moment here. Um, we we have almost uh, 30 uh, people joining us, and I just wanted to say to to everyone that's here, um, although this isn't a typical sort of artist talk or curator talk. I do welcome um, any questions that that anyone has, and, and certainly if there are no questions or, or comments from the audience, that's fine too. Um, I really enjoy talking to Walter about the exhibition. I want to congratulate all of the MFA uh, graduates. I want to congratulate all of the Chubb um, fellows um, for everything you've accomplished and 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 really um, making it through what has been um, an incredibly challenging year. Um, and 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 you know, thank you all for for your contribution, uh, artistic contribution. So. We don't have any questions, Walter, which means you've said it all. Well, you know, Dexter, <laughs> Dexter I want to, uh, I think we have a game show here that you could have <laughs> three critics or th uh, critics and curators or critics, curators and artists, show them an artwork and give them 30 seconds to say something <laughs> smart about it. <laughs> exactly. It, <laughs> it would be a game show that nobody would watch. <laughs> <laughs> One of the okay. things I find, you know, I, I, you know, I worked for years producing art criticism. And mm. as part of my job, I used to attend to what other art critics wrote. And at this point in my life, I've reached a stage where, you know, I think I know it all. So I don't have to pay attention to what other people say. And I think that happens to a lot of us. The older we get, the less attention we pay to to what people, what other people say, we we think what we think, and that's all we need to need to know. I don't know, I don't know what that means or what what the point of me saying that is. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, well, well, I do I do appreciate all of your insight, and so um, again, I'm quite certain that everyone who's joined us today um, has uh, the digital catalog has has read your essay, but if you haven't read. Walter's essay, I highly recommend that you do. Um, and again, I wanna thank everyone for joining us for today's conversation. And we're, we're gonna sign off in a moment. Walter, uh, thank you so much for your time, your insight, your energy, um, your uh, humor <laughs> as well. Uh, it was a delight talking to you. And I'll be in touch with you offline because I'd love to pick up our conversation one-on-one. -on -one. That would be great. You know, and I, I want to compliment and and say best wishes to all the students. I think there's a, a lot of invention there, a lot of interesting work. They obviously are very creative, work very hard. And um, since I don't need any more competition, they should all go get jobs in finance. <laughs> <laughs> they can become your collectors. <laughs> yes, I'm against art schools. I don't, I don't need any young competition. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I totally understand. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Walter. All right. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.